Hey guys, today I am going to show you how I quickly and efficiently make these Kydex sheaths using a combination of molds and CNC router with some hand finishing. Now, before we get started, I just want to talk about these sheaths a little bit. So if we look, you'll notice that there is a very slim profile to them, meaning where the edge is and where the edge of the kydex is, it's pretty much the most minimal amount of material possible that you can use. The way I have my holes set up is based off of the belt clips that I offer. So I offer five different belt clips on my website and each hole is in a very specific location so that the belt clip will work properly. You'll notice that there's pretty much no material right here. The sheath is wrapping around the handle and that's what causes the retention. So if I pop this out using the thumb tab, it snaps in nicely. Now this sheath is 100% free floating, meaning the blade is not touching the Kydex at all. That way we don't get scratching on our knife. Since these blades are free floating, the way I keep them from wobbling is I actually create a little ramp towards the tip so that the kydex touches the blade just behind where the sharpened edge is. And so by having a point of contact right behind that tip, as well as right where it's folding over, that just creates two different points of contact which keep the blades from wobbling around. I design all of these molds in a program called Fusion 360. And if you guys are interested in learning how to design molds and manufacture sheaths yourself, I actually have an online class that walks you through the whole process. I make all of my molds in-house from a material called HDPE, and I like to cut them in my mini mill using my Pearson vacuum chuck. So I simply just place it on here, the system uses compressed air to create a vacuum seal and hold my material down. Now you don't actually need a CNC mill like the one I'm using to make these. You can actually do all of this on a entry level CNC router. There are a lot of cheap router options online, especially if you're buying a used one. So you don't have to necessarily go for a high end CNC mill if you wanna do something like this. Now that we've seen how the molds are made, Let's take a look at some of the other equipment we'll need as well as the final process. So when it comes to vacuum forming your Kydex sheaths over a mold, there are a few different tools and pieces of equipment that we need. The first thing you need is this t-shirt press. These are just a heat press that you use typically to put t-shirt vinyl transfers on. Then you'll see here I have on the top and bottom a Teflon sheet. This is going to keep the press from sticking to your kydex. If we look at the vacuum forming area, so here I have my mold. This one holds four sheaths on it at once. And the mold has tiny little holes about an inch apart. And on the back side, I connect all those holes into a little grid pattern. And if we look at the table here, You'll notice this has a grid pattern as well. We also have this piece of aluminum extrusion. You just need this to cover the top of the kydex once it's on there and it'll create that seal and pull the kydex down. And of course, connected to this table, you're going to need a vacuum pump. Another piece of equipment that you'll need is this heat strip, often called an acrylic corner bending machine. You can get these on Amazon or various other sources, and it just has a heating element that runs in the middle. And this one is water cooled, comes with a pump so that the actual aluminum itself doesn't heat up. And you'll need this to heat the center of your sheath if you are doing a split type mold. And other than that, you'll need your standard sheath making equipment. So you will need some type of eyelet setter as well as your eyelets. Put that on there. I'm gonna start my timer. All right, so Kydex is ready to take out. It's been two minutes. I'm gonna kick on my vacuum pump.
As the material is cooling down naturally, I like to load my next piece of Kydex into my press and get it started. Next, I'll cool my initial piece down with some compressed air and then pull the mold out from under it. All right, so we're at three minutes and 37 seconds since I put this original flat piece in there. So that is three minutes, 37 seconds for us to have four sheets formed. Now we can take them over to the CNC router and cut them. In order to mount this on my router, I need to drill out the dimple holes in the corners. Pretty simple. Everything just self aligns. So I'm gonna be cutting these out on my Axiom Precision router. I like these because they can store multiple work coordinate systems. So every one of these cutting fixtures has its own work coordinate system and it saves it. I never need to reset my zero. I just turn this thing on and it's ready to run. So here's the cutting fixture. These are all mounted to what I call a location board, which is this plate right here. And on these location boards, there are standardized outer pinholes. So this will pull up and swap with any of these other location boards and maintain its zero. And then the inner features are all based off of the specific cutting fixtures that I have. I have threaded inserts in these in the corners. That way I can mount the sheets down before cutting the profile out. And the way this works, it's hard to see, but there are two little dimples right here. And if you look at the mold, there's two little divots that were also sucked down there, which lets me know this is the front side. These are perfect squares. However, nothing is ever perfect. So if your machine is a little off to the left or to the right, it's just good to have those mounting location references. I bolt down each corner. And now we are ready to run. The first thing that my router is going to do is bore out the holes that the eyelets will go in. And it's also going to cut the slots that I have in my sheaths. Typically, I will run this with my dust boot on so it gets a majority of the chips. Next, I'll attach each sheath to the cutting fixture with some quarter 20 screws. I like to use one in each corner, but if you want to use less, you can. I've found that when you use less than four, you get a poor edge quality that you then have to clean up by hand. So it just makes sense for me to use one in each corner. The next step is just to cut out the profiles. And this will be the last machining step that we do when making these sheaths. All right, so here are the sheaths after they've been cut. All I have to do is just unbolt them and they're pretty much ready for finishing. And these pop right off. We have all the slots, holes, everything you need for this exactly as they were designed in CAD. So I like to just clean the slots out a little bit of a cutoff buff and blend pad. And then I'm gonna clean up the edges on the buffer with one of these. So here are the edges after chamfering it. It'll look really good once it's all assembled. And honestly, I mean, I get emails from people thanking me for doing this. Typically most people making sheaths this way, they just leave the hard edges. Um, they might honestly do no cleanup like this. It'll just be pulling that sheath puck straight off the router, putting it on the heat strip, folding it, and leaving those 90 degree edges. But I think cutting the corners is in fact not cutting corners. And uh, it makes it a lot nicer because you're gonna be interacting with this and you don't want it to be sharp and Kydex can be very sharp. So 
it's great to knock off all those edges. So now I have my heat strip heating up and I have all of my sheaths cleaned with air and laid out on fresh paper towel, as well as the knives to fold them over. So I'm just going to put this right there to heat up. And depending on how hot you're running it, it could take anywhere from around 30 seconds to a minute to heat that center. What I like to do is just sort of take it off and fold it and see how it bends. It should feel really easy to bend. There shouldn't be much resistance. If you want to get scientific with it, you can measure out the temperature setting that you have on your dial and get the exact time and figure it out that way. For me, I just kind of grab it and feel it and it should easily just fold over like that. And if we look at the center, it shouldn't have a line running down the center. If you overheat it, there a line will start to form in the center of that kydex. So I'm going to just lift that up, put my blade right there, fold it over and press it into it. And it's really that simple. Then what I'll do is I'll start to squeeze down at the tip here, right behind the tip. And I'll jiggle it around and make sure that the blade is in the right place. Cause sometimes your blade could be sticking a little bit canted in one way. So I just like to make sure it's in there properly. And then of course I will go off screen and hit it with some compressed air to cool that spine down. Now I like to remove the blade from the sheath when it comes time to set the eyelets. And what I'm doing here behind the camera is I'm just putting my next sheath on the heat strip so that it's heating up as I go to press these eyelets. And then I like to start at the front tip and set the eyelets. And make sure none of them cracked. Perfect. All right, so now we have this semi-finished sheath. I have the actual knife that it is paired to. This is a custom order. DCK model that one of my customers ordered. It's a stone washed with OD green handles. They wanted this OD green sheath with the skull and bones engraving, double edge, pretty sweet knife. And this is how it fits just right off the bat. Ready? Snaps in perfectly. The next thing I always do is use a heat gun to heat up and bend the thumb tab. All right, so what I like to do is pinch down on the sides, hold that in place while pulling up right here. I have calluses on my hands, so it's not that difficult for me. And then once I have it molded a little bit of the way, I'll go in with my thumb so that it really forms to that thumb and is a proper thumb ramp. And then of course, with my thumb still on it, I'm going to lock it in place, cooling it down rapidly. There we go. What I always do now is I grind the tip off. So I'm going to show you guys that. So when I grind this tip, I have like a very special custom fixture that I made. So I have this cool fixture that I designed. It's pretty advanced and it keeps all the debris out when grinding the tip. And this is what it looks like. So literally all I do is just wrap this open portion with a paper towel with the knife inserted. And now I'm free to grind the tip and I could even scoot it back. If I needed to grind this edge, I'll scoot it back and grind the edge like this. And this is the next step. So now we can see it has a rounded tip and this sheath is fully done. If we look at the edges, it's all nice and round and smooth. So it's not going to cut you at all. It needs to be cleaned off just a little bit, but this thing is fully done. Yep, there we go. Now the last step, of course, just a little bit more air, take it out.
and uh, that's it. We'll put it back, and it goes right into one of these Ziplocs, and it's ready to get boxed up for the customer.